Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Many of Trudad, and welcome to the first live stream in quite a long time. It is Stellaris. It is Utopia. We've got proper things here. Yeah, we've got the other things ready to go too. Look, look how I've got that ready. <laughs> We're going to need that later. Space Romans is a thing that a lot of people seem to want. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we're doing Space Romans. Woohoo! I leaned into the microphone. It's like sexy Space Romans as well because I leaned into the microphone. Hang on, do it better. <laughs> space Romans. Oh, yeah. There we go. That was sexy. Someone's going to make like a ringtone out of that. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Balls. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> How do we keep it on the... Why is it changed? Okay, we're gonna put this up, because that's that's appropriate. People sometimes say to me, Oh, John, do you, do you like intentionally mess up? Is this like a comical affectation? No. No, that was just a real thing that just happened. Everybody is super excited about having, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to balls as the new Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Solaris Utopia and the Space Romans. Thrillingly, the Infinite Pond is going to be out there somewhere. We don't know exactly where they're going to be, but they're going to be out there in the galaxy somewhere because I can basically force them to spawn. So our old friends, the Mighty Ducks, are going to be out in the universe, like, somewhere. There's no guarantee we're going to be able to find them, but generally as the game goes on, like, within about, like, six hours, like, you've probably made contact with most people in the galaxy, so, I mean, it would be really nice if they did spawn nearby and we can try and be friends with them. That would be lovely, especially as they're pacifists, so potentially we can just kind of, you know, just smash them really, really nice and easily. We are going to have, obviously, our starting leader has got to be Julianus Vitinius. But then the question then would be, yeah, is it going to just be Emperor, or is potentially, are we, we going to actually have, as a kind of, like, literally he could be the Vitinius. Now, this is where things get a bit more interesting. Government and ethics. We need to literally create space Rome in terms of the actual ethics here. So we've still got three points. This has changed a little bit. This might be unfamiliar to you if you haven't had Utopia. Basically, um, they've swapped out individualism and collectivism, which were always badly named, for authoritarianism and egalitarianism now. So the kind of most of the others are pretty... Like, they've changed a bit, but they're kind of pretty similar. Uh, authoritarianism basically just means that you're better dealing with slaves and resettling people forcibly, whereas egalitarianism basically means that... Well, I don't really understand how the new faction system works entirely yet. I think it means that basically every faction basically gains faster. So basically, therefore, there's going to be high level of ethical divergence in the empire, I think. And also consumer goods, which is a new system whereby the government basically determines how luxuriously people live, um, are cheaper than they would be otherwise. Now, as with Space Rome, I think we've got to have at least one point in militarism, which is generally just a little bit useful. Anyway. So we're going to take one point in militarism. Now, I also feel like we also take, need to take a point in Xenophile, because the Romans, like, they were actually quite Xenophile. They were actually, you know, they were mostly Phil Hellenes won most of the big cultural debate. They did kind of, you know, they absorbed ideas from without and they took their culture out there. For the most part, they didn't like, you know, crush people or impose their will or their culture elsewhere. They created these fun little combinations of their culture and other people's culture. And generally, I think it all worked quite nicely. So I think we can have like militarist Xenophiles. And also, I was thinking, and I've got a reason for this. Materialist. Civis is interesting because, like, your species gets two, like, traits that are, like, innate to you genetically. But there's also civics, which are kind of more tied to you still being what you are now. So if I ever stop being, like, the relevant ethic, and that can change a lot more easily over time in Utopia, I kind of lose these. Now, what I was thinking is, obviously, you know, Rome is, there's a lot of slavery in Rome. But, like, slavery in the traditional sense is a bit backward. It causes a lot of trouble. So I think as we're future space Rome... What if we had robots? What if we actually had some robots? Because you can take the mechanist uh, civic, which basically means that you get to start off with four populations being robots. We think it's actually just quite a really, really useful thing, because then you basically got four units starting off who are just really good at mining minerals, and minerals are the real limiting factor in the early game. So I think that's actually a potentially good starting point. They all really just want you to have slaves. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have robo-slaves. 
Slavery is really, like, the problem is, like, if I want to be xenophile, it's really difficult to do slavery, because everyone else in the galaxy flipping hates slavery, so it's really difficult to do, because, like, otherwise you end up in this really weird situation where the only people I can enslave are my own people, but if any aliens move into my empire, we're actually going to end up in a situation where all the Romans are going to be enslaved to serve the aliens, which I don't think works particularly well. I actually want to have, like, everyone is going to be on hyperspace because I can set which um, FTL methods are allowable. I'm going to have everyone on hyperspace only. Like, it's really fun because in warp, everyone can just go anywhere. But with hyperspace only, you can actually, like, find choke points and actually build, like, um, fortresses and space stations there. So it means you can, like, much more tactically decide where a logical point for the edge of your empire is. And you can, like, keep parts of your fleet there because you know if someone's invading, they have to come through that system. So I really like, like, hyperspace only. Though, um, the Fallen Empires cheat because they get, like, the jump things. Um, so they get to effectively warp anyway. But I think that's kind of a nice advantage for the Fallen Empires to have when no one else gets it. At least until you research it yourself. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of Strong and I'm going to bring Enduring in, actually. Just so we keep our leaders around a bit longer. Just because when they get a lot better, it's useful to have them around. I'm pretty happy with that. Deviant, Enduring, Intelligent. Yes. Because Rome, Rome shall last. We're in the Vesta system, so we've got ourselves... Right, let's get our stuff here. So, uh, Science Ship. Start off, just survey this system that we're in right now. Um, no, what have we got nearby? I don't know if it's guaranteed where are we, by the way. We are, okay, we're over in the right of the galaxy. Remember where we parked, we're in the right of the galaxy. Uh, and actually, I'm not sure if it's guaranteed. Like, every time I start a new game, I always see, like, at least one habitable system inside your empire. I'm not sure if that's, like, a guaranteed spawn or anything. I assume it is a guaranteed spawn. A uh, fun thing that's changed here, by the way, is now, if I go over to Spaceport... Um, the colony ship is now a starting technology, you no longer need to research that. Which is, uh, it's kind of nice, because otherwise you just would always research first. But it doesn't mean you, like, rush to it, because one, you don't have the money, and two, it's a better idea to, like, build some mining stations as a starting point. Let's get some research going on here. Our little robo-slaves are doing a very, very good job in terms of boosting, uh, the food. Actually, do they, do they boost food, or do they, they, they just boost, I think they just boost, boost minerals, don't they? Uh, you... Yeah, it's just minerals plus 10%. So I want to kind of have them on all of the, the mining stuff. So what I probably ought to do is, uh, as soon as possible, build a new mining thing. A new mining network over here. Yeah, I know we're running out of power. It's fine. And then we'll move a robot over there as soon as possible. Because the robots aren't actually, like, doing anything better with the farming. They're just better at mining by 10%, which is fine. But yeah, we've got a healthy income already. Which is nice. So we'll get that in production, like, immediately. Um, the construction ship's not going to have anything to do right now. Um, I can send the first fleet around. Uh, but you've got to be a little bit careful with your first fleet these days. But ever since, kind of, Leviathans, I think, there's a lot more nasty things in the world. So I'm just going to put the um, my little fleet into evasive mode. Because I don't actually want them to, like, you know, cause, cause any trouble or run into any difficulty. So I'm just going to send them to, like, explore around over here. So we can basically kind of, you know, tie up this sort of area. Because basically, yeah, if there's something happens to be good something here, then pretty much we can, like, secure this area if we just close our borders. Which would be quite good. I'm glad we've got the cursor now. That's really useful for the fact I'm indicating things with the cursor. We've got a lovely white sun, by the way. This is a class F star, apparently. So we're just doing that right now. We've got ourselves lovely, lovely little green world here. A little kind of green construct ship has nothing to do for the time being. Uh, yeah, while our ship is just kind of going around and doing some scanning, literally scanning the sun. Uh, yeah, um, one thing has changed in particular. Well, two things immediately. Um, one, I was about to say food is global. Uh, no, it used to be global. Now it's galactic, if you like. Uh, now food is a galaxy-wide thing. Um, which is nice, because it meant that, like, it was very difficult to, like, settle on new worlds that didn't happen to have some, like, some, just some good stuff in terms of, like, food. Um, previously it was very difficult to just sit down, there was nothing but, like, a mining world, for example. Um, uh, oh! Oh, what a flipping good start. Look at that, we've got a four mineral planet, it's the second thing we've ever scanned. This, this is, nice. that is just beautiful, right there. Spaceport of Rome has finished its construction crew. That's the second uh, one of them. Now, my little, uh, which one's the, hang on, let's get my construction ship over here. Head over in this direction. It's not actually quite ready. No, just move there for the second, please. I'm not sure it's actually quite ready to, no, I need 90 minerals to, uh, do want to speed that up a little bit. I could cancel, I could cancel the, um, the other one. You know what, you, other science ship, I want you to just head over here and actually, you may as well. We're not going to have a thing ready for a while. We just head over here and scan this section. Uh, survey. Oh, no, sorry. I need to assign you a scientist first. Sorry, my mistake. Uh, scientist. Recruit a scientist. Uh, service speed plus 25%. Normally failure. I always go for anomaly failure because anomaly is just like killing a scientist that's pretty good is really annoying. 
so you, my science ship, just head over here, survey this system, lovely. Yeah, we've got a bit of an energy deficit, by the way, because robots, unlike people, require energy. So, like, normally you'd start off with a little energy surplus. In my case, I haven't. Uh, so we're up to 90, we will be at the end of next month, and there we are. Boom. Yeah, build a mining station. That's going to put us into an even flipping bigger energy deficit, but whatever, we'll fix that it's soon. It'll all be fine. Data. We've encountered some aliens or something. Probably, probably just uh, some floaty things. So they are the alpha aliens. Yep, enigmatic spacefarers. Uh, oh no, are they fellow wanderers? Uh-oh, really? Are they? Wait, what? Are... Oh, no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. They're just um, void clouds. It's just void clouds. Uh, that's okay. Uh, we're just going to run away from them. Where were they? They were over here. That's fine. They can stay over there. We don't have to bother researching that in a hurry. We found... Ooh! We have found, just by virtue of sending these guys around, we found something over here. 18, and it's a perfect fit. Lovely. Now, that's better. Thing is, like, I know you always start off with, like, a friendly planet in your own system, like, within your own empire. You don't really want to go for it, because that doesn't really expand your empire much. Over here is a much better bet. So that's way nicer. Um, so you can now continue on your path. Yeah, the ships are much better at continuing on their journey after they've been chased out of a system now, which is really nice. So potentially, I think this over here would likely be our first thing. Uh, we've started our queue. That's done. So over here, down the surface, we want to get this guy off here for a second. And hello. Oh, no. I think we've just started next to potentially um, a flipping fallen empire of holy guardians. This is a concern. Let's cooperate and you don't murder me. Yeah, first alien encounter. The wisdom must indeed be great. Oh, uh, we've encountered intelligent craft. So we've basically run into some snails. Some holy guardian snails. And they're really... Where are they? Where, where exactly are they? So basically, we've started next to a fallen empire. So that's good. Uh, but actually, it's not that bad. Because now we know for a fact that means nothing's going to come from this direction. Because those guys aren't going to bother getting involved in our business. They're never going to get, like, up in our face and whatever. They're just going to say, don't trespass on holy sites. So, uh, just don't get involved. Uh, this world's probably still safe. Ho was. Ho was. It's a bad name anyway, to be honest. No one really wants to move to Ho was 3. We can rename it. It just, it sounds like it's just like the punchline to a really bad joke. They want you to attack the snails so I can eat them with garlic and butter. We're not attacking the snails. I'm going to send this guy straight over here, just to um, survey Ho was, purely for the sake of figuring out whether it's like really desperately that good. Because if it's not that good, I'd rather not risk like getting close by to the snails, to be honest. Because they're so adorable, but they will murder me. Like, and are they supposed to have, like, a little bit of, like, a little, like, bit of wheat in their mouth? They're kind of, like, chewing a little bit of wheat at me. I've never been sure what that little bit is. Is that, like, like snail whiskers? Do snails have whiskers? I don't know if snails have whiskers. Basically, yes. Yes, they do. How do you know whether snails have whiskers? Because I've seen a snail before? How close up? I well, don't get that close up to snails. They have little retracty bits. Yeah, but those are the bits on its head. What's this bit? What's that? I mean, it makes sense that they would have whiskers. Does it? Let me Google that for yeah, you. Yeah, let's figure out whether snails have whiskers. We're going to learn something today. Google doesn't even think that do snails have whiskers is an appropriate question. It wants me to Google whether seals have whiskers. Do And well, do seals have whiskers? Let's find out the answer to that question as well. Almost all mammals grow whiskers. But no. hu well, humans don't. We kind of, we, we grow facial hair. We yes, don't, we don't yes, use we it grow whiskers. That's why you call moustaches whiskers sometimes. Yeah, but you don't, we don't use them for anything. Ooh, well, this, I didn't say that's useful. nice. I said we grow them. Oh, this. Okay, fine. We've got actually, in Bralix over here, we've got six minerals. That's actually pretty nice. Oh, and we found something else over here. Good. Oh, we're just swimming in minerals. We could really do with some more energy. Uh, and probably the one thing I should have mentioned earlier is unity is now a thing. This is how you unlock these new really powerful perks. Basically, if you've played Civ V, uh, yeah, it's Civ V's things. It's the old Civ V civic system, uh, which is fine because I actually like that better than the civics tree that existed in Civ VI. I much prefer the Civ V system where it felt like um, your things you were imposing were much... Ooh. Oh, apparently the food the food cap is really low. Cause, like the, the cap for minerals is like 5,000. No, for, yeah, 5,000 for food and for, for minerals and for energy. For food, it's only like 200. So yeah, there's a really small food cap. Um, more level 2 anomalies. No, leave B for now until you've leveled up a bit. B 
But yeah, the nice thing about having robots is you can double your growth speed because people just grow normally, but you can also build robots as well. So like when you're building robots at like twice the speed, you basically you can just increase your population twice as fast. Ah, okay, we've got, got some good stuff over here. You've leveled up, good. Uh, now, have you scanned that world yet? Uh, now, ooh. Okay, I think we've come to the conclusion that Ho was free, aside from being a hilarious punchline for a joke that we haven't figured out yet, is not a good place to land. Uh, because one, huge amounts of it doesn't seem to have much on it. There's not many minerals. There's four different types of block. No, sorry, five different types of blocker. So it's going to be ages before we can unblock the planets. And it's really close to the snails. What happened to first fleet, by the way? Oh, it just reappeared back here. Uh, okay. Let's look at the shape of the galaxy, because this is what's really nice about hyperdrive only. It's because, like, yeah, you have to kind of consider where the hyperlanes are, and thus where likely choke points are. So, like, potentially, like, holding this sort of an area, and, like, having, say, right here, anyone who's approaching us from the north, because galaxies have a north, has to approach, like, from, from this angle. They can't not. So, like, as a result, like, if we, like, built, say, a planet or a fortress or something there, like, we can have a fairly secure border in that direction, which is kind of nice. Um... Uh, but the thing is, if we if we take over Ho was free, then we can have, like have all these systems basically unopposed, because no one else will ever come this way. Also, the entire chat wants you to kill the snails. This here, this is the face of death. Okay, this is what my sudden death looks like. These are holy guardians, fanatical spiritualists with overwhelming power in their fleets, armies, and technology levels, all right? Their cities float. Uh, some ancient battlers deposited scattered wreckage of an alien fighter on the frozen planet. Only the exposed core of its main weapons remain intact. It seems this alien race used lasers somewhat more advanced than the ones currently used by the Brutii fleet and fizzling in its periodicity to shut low-powered lasers into the eyes of Ho Was 4. Uh, the planet's harsh climate prevents the lasers from actually melting the ice, allowing the chilly matrix to act as a brilliant prism. So we think we've just gained blue lasers. Nice! Ooh! Ooh! We have, we've gained enough, we've gained enough unity to actually unlock a tradition. Now, so, uh, the way this works is, yeah, each of these has its own tree. Um, uh, when you start a different tree, expansion, domination, prosperity, etc., you gain a starting bonus. You immediately gain just a free bonus that just is part of that tree. Um, uh, when you complete a tree, you get another bonus, you get a finishing bonus. And when you complete a tree, you also unlock an ascension perk. Which basically means you get to have a ridiculously powerful one-off bonus. And some Ascension perks are locked until you've got, like, a certain number of Ascension perks, for example. Um, so, like, say, let's just look at Expansion here. So, if I adopt Expansion, like, if I take any perk in the Expansion tree and thus begin, then I get to have all my new colonies will start off with one additional pop. When I finish the Expansion tree, then I would then, adopting all Expansion traditions increases our core sector systems by two. This is why they lowered, like, core sector systems to, like, um, to three by default. You can get it back up to five if you're willing to spend one of your civics on it. It's because now you can, like, you know, with expansion, anyone can get up to two, which I prefer because it used to be the pacifist. Like, if you wanted to have loads of systems, you had to be a pacifist because, like, having, like, the, the ironic bureaucracy and having, like, the pacifist plus two to core worlds was the only way you were allowed to have, like, a decent number of, um... A decent number of um, core worlds at all. So I like I prefer this now where anyone can have it if you're just willing to like spend the civics and the tradition points on it. Now this is nice. Federation used to be, have to be like a technology. You had to wait until it just happened to show up. Uh, but now you can basically get it straight away with the diplomacy tree. Which is really quite interesting if you want to play more like a federation. Because previously you were just kind of waiting until it just happened to show up by luck. Which is kind of cool. Okay, yeah. That's actually really tempting. Because then I get it straight away. I can straight away have 20% border range. Which is actually pretty damn good. Just for the increased number of systems that fall into your empire. 20% is really damn nice. Or... I don't need the prosperity thing yet. Because I'm actually... Yeah, you know I'm going to take that. I'm going to adopt supremacy straight away. Yeah, I'm going to adopt the supremacy tradition. Now, they're going to get more expensive as time goes by, obviously. Now, I, oh no, sorry, I thought I should get to, I got to actually have one of those, but I don't get to have one of those, I've just literally adopted it full stop. Um, but that's fine, now I get my borders are going to, like, increase. I don't know if it's going to happen, like, oh, there we are, you can just sort of happen right there. So now Maya has actually fallen straight into our empire, which is pretty damn good, so I'm actually pretty happy with that. Yeah, we're really lacking in power production right now, I should, next time solar panels becomes available, I really need to research that. We find some good. <gasps> Gaia World! We've got a Gaia world. Isn't that the thing that the snails are really 
seen to? Um, well, possibly. It's called Prophet's Retreat. Which does concern me. A lot of people have been talking about Gaia Worlds, have been using that phrase with, uh, in conjunction with talking about the snails and their holiness. Yeah, I mean, like, I assume, like, they're, they consider, I mean, like, it's not inside their empire. Do they consider this a problem if I, if I was to go and set up on this planet? I mean, it's literally called Prophet's Retreat. It's gonna be holy to them, isn't it? They're saying, holy world, do not settle. They will murder you. What if I said? What if I sent my entire fleet of strength seventy nine? I mean, that's like way higher than seventy eight. Stupid space snails. What have we found? No, no, no. Those aren't. Are those real aliens? Yes, those are real aliens. We have got our first actual aliens. They are avian. We have got avian aliens somewhere nearby. We've actually found. Wait, hang on. That's Alpha Centauri. Oh, I think we've spawned really close by to Earth. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, that's the Mighty Ducks. Where's the Mighty Ducks? We found the Mighty Ducks! That's that's pure coincidence, because I've started a game before where the Mighty Ducks were right on the other side of the galaxy. They actually appear to be our nearest neighbour. Oh my god, right, get get a situation log, communicate with the gamma aliens, they're called the Mighty Ducks, damn it. We found the Mighty Ducks, I'm so happy! I know! I didn't know we were gonna find them. I thought like, you know, I thought we'd be really happy if like by the end of the six hours we'd run into it. But it's technically not called Sol, because it is the brightest quack. No, oh, everyone's really happy that we found the mighty ducks. We're not killing all the ducks! We're not killing How the ducks! How dare du you! What if I offered you the ducks with the garlic and the snails? You don't <laughs> <laughs> have the garlic, John! Duck goes with hoisin sauce. Claire, I have literally never We're met berries. anyone in my life who enjoys eating duck as much as you. I have it's yummy. The colony ship's almost done. The moment that happens, we're going to hit such an energy deficit. I'm actually kind of worried. Uh, in fact, actually, I really need to look at that right now. Because uh, that's going to be a serious problem. So over to Vesta. Uh, down onto the planet here. Yeah, this is not a big world. Um... I could upgrade, yeah, let's just upgrade that. Why not upgrade the, the mining thing? I can't upgrade any of my power facilities just yet. I need to... I'm just going to build a power plant on this. I know I'm, I'm supp I hate suppressing science, but, like, I think we need to do it just because I desperately need a little bit more power going on here. So, go over here. Found a colony on this world. Colonized only 46, and as I thought, we're just going to, like... We kind of have to be down here. I don't really know what we're gonna do. So it could be ho oh no 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 no. We've got we've got the we've got the planet name here. We've got our first colony. Chat, let's stop with hashtag sex the ducks and name the planet instead. I literally can't sex the ducks. There's no way to sex the ducks. I can invite them to my planet and they're welcome to live there. I would love it if the ducks migrated to my planet. <laughs> you I would love to sex the duck. I don't have the option, okay? It's 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 physiologically tricky. Have you seen duck penises? Someone made that very point in the chat, and I agreed. Duck penises are, in fact, terrifying. Yeah, they're, they're spring-loaded, like, corkscrew things. If you've never seen a duck penis, look it up. Unless you're Don't Google things unless, that John tells you to Google. Unless you're currently at school or work, in which case, please don't. Also, if you're at school, it's Saturday. You've probably come in on the wrong day. I'm feeling like Nero... John Stantinople. John Stantinople is a possibility. I think we've just got... It feels like Nero Prime would be acceptable to a lot of people, I think. Yeah, I mean that that sounds good. They they also say Claire World, but maybe not. We're not, not that no one. no. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll find a particularly crappy world that we're only taking. Oi! We'll find a really crappy tiny world that we're only taking because of the mining rights it grants us. <laughs> so yeah, Nero Prime. I think it feels like the chat is very much in favour of Captain Nero being represented. This yeah. is this is in honour of the greatest Roman hero who gave his life for the Empire. Back in the day, in the ancient history, centuries, millennia ago, in fact, Captain Nero. Someone said 
said that uh, that Nero never died. It was another another captain that died. But then you put the army in a boat and went into a match. It was given a randomly generated captain. No, I want I want to I want to clarify this. We're gonna we're gonna settle this once and for all because this this is not true. Okay, what happened was Captain Nero's forces received reinforcement in the form of Equites from Captain Decimus. Captain Decimus joined the army, and Captain Nero, being not only the greatest Roman of all time, but also incredibly humble, like you've never met a more humble man than Captain Nero, understood that it was a good idea that the man who had the horse should be the commander, so he could ride around the battlefield and give orders better. So Captain Nero was not a glory hunter. So Captain Nero was still in the army, he just was not in command, but that army was wiped out to the last man. Okay, that army was wiped out. Captain Nero may not have been in command, but he still died. He still died, and because he was in the infantry force, he was in the force that took part in the gallant last stand against Gaius the Harsh that died, okay? Captain Nero was killed, okay? I'm sorry, he's dead. He is canonically dead. Hashtag Nero never died. Hashtag Nero, no, not hashtag Nero never died. There you go, they are peaceful traders. They are pacifists, they're materialists, we're also materialists, and we're xenophile. Like, surely, materialist pacifists and materialist xenophiles can get on. We can be friends with these guys. I mean, I refuse to admit that we can't be friends with these guys. So cooperation will surely benefit us, mighty ducks, who, let's be honest, they were never ducks. They were always platypuses because they lived in the mammal thing. But we don't talk about that because there wasn't an actual duck. Non-aggression pact has been immediately offered by the Mighty Ducks. Woo! I think we should totally accept that immediately. That's non-aggression, not... Uh, yeah, non-aggression pact is fine. Um, defensive pact might have been a little bit too much. The thing about defensive pact is they're good, but I think they they cost you influence. Uh, but let me see, we've got a fair bit of influence coming in right now. Uh, you're all leveling up. That's fine. Actually, we should actually have looked... We haven't even looked at Julianus Vitinius properly yet. Um, so let's see what Julianus Vitinius, what he's actually like. So Julianus Vitinius, who's 54 and is going to live for quite a long time, is traits warlike and home in the sky. So a spaceport build costs minus 20%, spaceport module costs minus 20%. That is pretty useful. And weapons damage plus 5%, army damage plus 10%. Demonstrating the skills there that his ancestor, the original Julianus Vitinius, also represented. He is a fine... Maybe he's part of the original family member. Hereditary boldness has been passed down all these flipping years. Right now, it is a good idea for us to immediately offer a trade deal. And I'm going to offer a fairly favourable trade deal to these guys. So I'm going to offer them some minerals. Oh, they seem... Oh, look at that. They're desperate for minerals. They're clearly... Because oh, cool. the, the amount they're interested in minerals has gone way up. So I think they're actually, they're struggling for minerals. So I think, therefore, they'll be willing to... Ooh. No, I think the problem is they also don't have any energy credits to trade away. I think, actually, they're kind of struggling a little bit. So probably they're right now at capacity as well. In fact, actually, it's very likely they're just sending out their first colony ship. So they're probably in an energy deficit right this exact moment too. Actually, there's probably loads of good stuff. I haven't actually fought... I actually haven't bothered surveying <laughs> my own empire, uh, which I should probably do... <laughs> Before we kind of, you know, send things, before we send science ships out into the middle of nowhere, uh, you should probably survey our own empire, please. So survey, and then survey, and then survey. And we've got, are you actually, uh, yep, we found a new empire. That is, I think that's plant. Uh, that doesn't look, fam that, that doesn't look familiar to me, so I'm pretty sure that's plant. Uh, okay, so get them being researched straight away. Uh, the... The Epsilon aliens that just showed up, right? Yeah, they, they're the ones at the bottom. It must be them. Right, research that. Uh, get them. So we've got something going on. Yeah, they're up here. That's fine. So it feels like there's another empire somewhere up here. But I feel like we weren't really expanding this direction anyway. I feel like actually, if anything, we expand down in this direction over here. And we kind of let the infinite pond have this sort of area. We haven't really found anything that good that we want to have around here. Ah, okay. We found what's probably the home world around here. So we found whatever these guys are. These guys are indeed the Epsilon aliens. So we've got a new group there. If these guys happen to be friendly, we've actually got the basis of an actually a decent federation here. We could actually kind of go down more of a diplomatic friendly route than I was expecting, which would be kind of fun. The energy is about to drop by another 12. Literally, we're about to run out of energy. Oh, okay, never mind. Uh, communication has been established. If they hate us, we could be in trouble because if they close the borders, First Fleet's now trapped on the far side. <laughs> Uh, but it could just go the long way around, so it's fine. Uh, now, time to figure out whether these guys are in any way friendly. They are... Xenophile fanatical materialists. They're literally us. Nice. They are, they are literally an absolute match 
for us. And they're what? An insect? They are, I think, yeah, they look buggy. Uh, but we should, probably shouldn't use that word. I like the fact that they are the rational consensus. That's their style of government. They are the rational consensus. Yeah, um, well, that looks like a definite material for a federation. Yeah. I mean, I just want to say, like, um, Claire started playing Slurus recently. And the first time you played, you spawned between, what was it, fanatical zealot dragons... That's and right. mi and um, the militarist uh, slaver lizards. That, that's and they right. both hated you and banned you from their territory immediately. And I've spawned close by to materialist like xenophile right pacifists. I was right in between them. Okay, we're actually we're doing this. We are actually going to try and form a federation with these guys. We're forming a federation, damn it. I, I wasn't planning to do that. I mean, when we set up militarists, I thought we were going to do a bit more like, you know, just aggression. But like, Stellaris too often, de you know, kind of degenerates into like you know people just being anxious on long wars like having an actual proper federation and thus having a fairly secure northern frontier that actually works for me as far as i'm concerned so yeah this is all looking very very nice deal. i want to say very nice indeed um we're kind of out of energy uh, i'm gonna try and trade with these guys i really hope they've got some energy <laughs> please tell me you've got energy because i have like none uh how much are you willing to trade for me we'll just kind of keep putting this up until it reaches Minus a thousand. Oh, this is good. Okay. That's good. That's good. Okay, now let's just lower this. It's no longer minus a thousand. Right. And then they've got 138 energy. Boom. And I'm willing to give them an instant transfer of basically whatever they want. Uh, actually, that's looking pretty good. Just going to get it up to one so they get a good deal. 123 for 138. That's technically a poor deal because energy becomes increasingly worthless as the game goes by. But I'm just sitting on 428 right now. So I'm willing to accept that, and because it's in their favour, they should. I think they should always accept this. I don't think they even can refuse it if it's positive, unless they actually really hate you. Yes! <laughs> we have energy! Nice. And because I've given both of these guys good trade deals, they're actually going to like me uh, more for it. And we've actually expanded faster than both of them, which is really nice. So actually... I'm pretty happy with that. I'm pretty happy with that indeed. Corvettes are small and fast and light. So I agree. Equites is actually an excellent call sign for them. So they're the Equites. Hello. We've got a size 24 continental world up there. I really wish I'd bothered scanning this system now. <laughs> That'd be really good. Uh, right. Okay. Well yeah. I, there's, apparently there's a much better world than who than Ho was free. Uh, over there, but uh, okay. You're just taken in by the beautiful name. Ho was free, yeah, absolutely. Who wouldn't be? Uh, right. Um, now, you, I just need to figure out what are these pirates doing? Are they? Oh no, they're attacking on my. They're attacking my thing. Uh, they're attacking my. It's just a mining station. I can do with if they attack a mining station. That's fine. Their strength is about 131. I've got blue lasers on a couple of my ships. I'm probably safe to attack these guys. But I think I'm willing to accept. Um, yeah, I think I'm willing to accept. Oh, by the way, uh, I think this is new, by the way. Uh, because uh, since you told me this might... Actually, maybe this isn't new. This was added at some point. It, it's I kind of noticed it. I think I've seen it too many times before. Uh, because we're the Brutal and we're all green, the ship trails are green. Which is really cute. You, head over here and survey this system. And just keep feeling around. Because that's a nice system. Now, have you scanned this planet yet? That's actually the one we live on. Uh, yes, you have. Right, this is... Okay, it's small, but it might do as a decent candidate just for putting it down for the mining rights and potentially for, yeah, like, because literally pretty much every square has got something good on it. And actually, plenty of them have double good stuff, which is actually quite nice. Yeah, actually, you know what? We might go and take Iram 3. It's tiny, but it's worth it just because this is a good system to hold. That's a good system to hold. If potentially it lets us block off this system in our empire, then we can basically say this is a logical endpoint to the empire, so that could be a good third colony right there. Uh, yeah, actually, that could create some really nice blocking space for us around here in terms of blocking off the space lanes for anyone we don't like. That's worth thinking about. Nero Prime's nearly finally flipping ready, and then after that point, I think we can't actually afford to do a third colony until we get the energy infrastructure sorted out. I'm starting to really wish, by the way, that we had... Bloody hell, the space pirates are just fleeing. They've basically just left our territory. Where the bloody hell are they even going? They've actually left where we are. How do we bloody track them? We're just hunting them to the ends of the universe now. I really hope they're not leading us back to their base. That'd be really unfortunate. I think we have actually found their base. Uh, so, let's see what's going on here. We should be able to take them apart pretty quickly. Because they are using red lasers and we're using blue. So, we should be able to take them apart pretty quickly, hopefully. Um... 
We've lost Corvair. I think they have as well. The problem is the lasers aren't very good at cutting through shields. Once their shields are down, it should be able to just cut through their hulls. The problem is they've actually now got the support of this here uh, orbital platform thing, which does give them the advantage. Uh, I mean, like technically, the, the game is saying we're not doing well, but I think we're actually doing fine. And we've also found the partial remains of a thing. Derelict on ship. We'll get to that in a minute. The problem is, I just want to kind of take out the fleet. I might be willing to back off here. We're down to, oh, flipping heck. Now, someone says you need to increase space control. Does that have anything to do with this fight? Space control? Mm -hmm. Increase space control. Yup. Increase space control. I am not sure what they mean. I'm not sure what they mean either. I'm not sure what they mean either. They had useful advice before, so I thought it was worth a go. This guy, because it's got solar strength, if I retreat now, there's like, I think it's a 50-50 chance he might die. So I kind of may as well just let him die, to be honest, in order to see if I can take out maybe one more ship of theirs. I'll back out. I'd like to... Oh, if we just change... If we turned all fire onto the space station. Oh, that's really annoying that we've done that. Because we should have just finished off their fleet, damn it. We could have just finished off the damn thing. We're never going to take out that thing. Oh, fine. In that case, retreat, because you've made stupid decisions. They're saying you should pause more, I think. Spa like, literally space and control on the keyboard. Ah! Okay, yeah, that would that would make more sense. Uh, Not that we have to turn on the space control! <laughs> now, yeah. go, now go to the policy screen and check for space control. <laughs> Sorry, I've played this game, but not with keyboard shortcuts quite yet. <laughs> Good old space control. <laughs> I haven't researched the technology. <laughs> Upgrade the spaceport. We need space control added as a module. They would like to know if you have finally now surveyed all the planets that you started with instead of just forgetting and then randomly finding cool ones. No, no we haven't. In fact, there's a really good world right at the edge of the Empire, right here, that we should really go and get that I still haven't surveyed. Uh, but I have got a science ship in the area right now who's going around doing that. Well that, done. That is their job. If I just scanned my own, of the one just outside my own system, I would have found that faster. I just, I thought I'd sent um, the first fleet through there. Speaking of first fleet, they are missing in action for a while. They're going to return in two weeks. Uh, they'll probably show up at Vesta, uh, given it's the only starport I've got. And then after that, we can basically go and take care of, once we've kind of built some more stuff, we can send uh, the kind of the new bigger fleet over to take care of the hostile fleet and indeed the pirate station too, just to make sure they don't cause trouble for us. Yes, I know we've got a negative energy balance. <laughs> so, yeah, attack, attack, murder. Mur you see this? If if he just attacked the two ships, look how, look how bloody easy that was. And we've also got some form of special research project here uh, that we can't even see what it is exactly, so that's fine. We'll check that out later. Uh, we'll send uh, the first Legion home for the time being. Um... Because, yeah, right now I think we can just, like, we'll repair them up a little bit. We'll add a couple of ships in before we send them out further into the world. And we'll go clear out that pirate base. I don't think the pirate base spawns new ships. I've got chocolate now. I've got chocolate. I'm going to open the chocolate. Oh, the chocolate is going to be good. Claire was also got a bag. I got both of us a bag. Oh, solar panel network. Okay, I know fusion reactor is great and shield is great. But energy is a real problem for my empire. Because I've got robots in it. So I need solar panel network. So that's just kind of, yeah, pretty important for me. Especially since it's only going to take 27 months. So I think that's a, that's a good thing to do. Ignore the sounds of packets being opened and chocolate being eaten. It's fine. Oh, look at all this. Yo, yeah. I think we're definitely going to Irum next. Even though, like... I mean, this stuff's good. But it's not going to get as much. Because literally the Empire's going to expand out to, like, these if we're lucky. Whereas, yeah, like, Irum's going to get us all sorts of stuff. So just keep, yeah, keep surveying. And then after that, just survey up here. Because that will give us actually a good idea for everything that might theoretically be covered. I mean, we know there's uh, there's 554 alien investors up here. We also went in here and... Oh, yeah, there's loads of stuff in there as well. Oh, this is good. This is... Yeah, we're going to Irum. Mighty Ducks still haven't expanded. These guys have uh, over here towards the Mighty Ducks. Uh, which kind of works for me. Hopefully these guys don't end up like... I mean, they're similar. They're both materials. I think we should be all right. Hopefully that won't happen. It just kind of now depends where the might decide to expand to. Oh, no, they have expanded. Ah, they, ex oh, they picked a kind of a... I mean, they expanded here. The problem is that just doesn't really get them anything. Because it means their, their empire's only going to slightly expand this way. They've barely gained any benefit from it. Like, when I expand, I want to, like, get some good mining rights out of it. Which they just haven't really. Which is kind of a shame for them. Uh, we still haven't quite... We're not quite inside this area yet. <laughs> so close. Which is kind of annoying. 
I'm now choking to death. Excuse me for a second. <coughs> Hang on. Uh, Don't die. I'm dying. Technical difficulties. <coughs> We're good. So fine. I'm not dead. I've got a power plant that's not doing anything here. Get in the bloody power plant. Do you have an idea how little energy we've got in the Empire right now? We've got some flipping pre-Space Age people that we've just come across here. Uh, so, what have we got? Uh, light pollution visible, consistent with density population, machine age society. They've mastered air travel, factories and mass producing goods in their cities. Okay. Uh, so we have got, hang on, you are in... Oh, they're mushrooms! And they are machine age. So what we probably ought to do is... Yeah, where are those exactly? Those are on... Rurius. Okay. So it's probably worth uplifting those guys. Because the thing is, if you don't uplift them, then when they pop up, they'll be independent. And if someone gets them before you, then they can become someone else's protectorate. And it can be very, very annoying. So they can, like, squeeze out, like, your empire. Because, like, if I'm over here, they'll probably squeeze me out of Selnok. Whereas if I basically raise them up myself... Then as a result of that, we'd like they'd be my protectorate automatically when they become a proper empire. And as a result, like they'll automatically work for me and any like any mines or whatever I've already put down remain in my possession rather than transferring to them. Yeah, you know what? I'd actually like to build a federation with those guys to the north of me. Because I feel like actually together we could form a pretty decent empire. So we're going into diplomacy. Yeah, adopt that. Nice. I mean, I know it's, it's probably a bit of a waste to begin, like, three trees, but, like, the starting bonuses are really damn good. Often the starting bonuses are, like, the starting bonuses are flipping better than anything else. Sometimes the starting bonuses are better than what's actually in the damn tree. Solar panel network. Thank flipping goodness. This guy's willing to offer me one. Okay. It's, that's, that's fine. Okay. You know, you have any idea how desperate I am? Yeah, one for one. One for one for the rest of, for 30 years. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Come on. Give me t No. I'm going to give them a 30-year deal of one mineral for one energy credit a month. There we go. We are delighted to see you beautiful Roman sphinxes. Nice. Okay, sex the bugs, as it turns out. The bugs are coming on a little bit weirdly too strong. Like, you know, the ducks are cool. They're just saying, like, you know, we trust in your judgment, Roman friends. They're not being weird. Okay, the bugs just made it weird. All right, not my fault. It is joy to meet another curious and sexual people. Too many prefer to let the mysteries found in the depths of space remain mysteries. Oh, there we are. No, John. <laughs> you see, he's, oh, he likes that. <laughs> <laughs> the Romans touched me. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> oh, the bugs are up for it. The bugs are 100% up for this. It's a very strong vote for Era. We're going to era. I desperately want the colony to be able to pass on benefit to power production, but that means suppressing the tile with the two on it. Which, uh, you know what? No, I'm going to suppress the one, uh, no, I'm going to suppress one food here. I'm going to suppress one food there, because then it's going to pass benefit onto two and two. So it's another one where we're going to not pass on properly, but I'm pretty happy with that. So, there we are. We've got the colony over here. So... Hang on, what are we going to call this colony? Oh yes, they have said it. They have said, I was dead, several times. <laughs> Done. It's, it's, it's going to be Iverstead. We're going to Iverstead, damn it. It's quite a long journey, but we're going to make <laughs> it to Iverstead. We're starting to get our first ever so slight signs of ethical divergence here. This guy is a pacifist. We've got another pacifist. We've got yet another pacifist. Okay, this is interesting. That's had... pretty good. Well, no, it's not, because we're not pacifists. Wait, but didn't you want to be friends with everybody and have, like, a... Yeah, but that doesn't mean I don't want to occasionally murder other people, too. Too many pacifists in the Empire are going to cause flipping trouble. They're bloody troublemakers. They kind of want us to not wage wars and stuff. No factions yet, but I suspect they're going to start springing up now we've got flipping pacifists on this idyllic garden world down here at Nero. Captain Nero wasn't a pacifist. What would Captain Nero would be turning in his grave? He was he, he flipping. He held that bridge and he took the fight to the Scipiones. You should not be on planet Nero if you believe in pacifism. Bloody hell, guys! Come on. We've made it to Iverstead. What? We have made it. Iverstead is there. And that means straight away our construction ship that is right here can actually start building yet, yet another flipping mining station. Because if there's one thing we need, it's more things that draw power. 
And we've got... Oh, we've actually got a transmission coming in. We have found someone else. We found more xenophiles. Fanatical xenophiles, in fact. Yeah. Respond in a xenophile sort of way. Cooperation will benefit us all. We've got... Oh. It's a stagnant ascendancy. I think we've just found another fallen empire. Where are... Yes. Yes, Ooh. we have. It's over here, in fact. We just kind of came close enough to them that we've got... Yeah, we've got a fallen empire. So we're actually kind of... We're kind of between two fallen empires right now. And, um... I'm not saying that's bad, but Leviathans did add the fact that occasionally fallen empires wake up and go to war with each other. And kind of, you know, anyone who's close by to the war is forced to take sides or be crushed underfoot. We'll be back very soon, ladies and gentlemen. And in the meantime, do I do, I do the outro? For do a break? Yeah. You, do you, did you make a break screen? No, no, wait, yes. Yes, we yeah. did. Yeah, I did I did do a break screen. Just, I don't know whether I kind of need to do the outro. Do the outro. No, you do the outro. Do the outro, Claire. Go on. This is your moment in the sun. Um... Come, Claire. Come. I can't remember your outro. I can remember you can't, my outro. What do you mean you can't? Okay, do your outro then. It's probably rubbish in comparison. Go! <laughs> I'm not doing my outro. Do it. Go <laughs> it. Do it. We're on a break. We're going to have burgers. We'll come back. Your on a break screen. Your outro's terrible. <laughs>